folks and welcome back to Fishing with Dan. Today I'm going to show you how to make the sliding waggler floats that I fished with a couple of weeks ago and this is a, an example of it. Um, if you haven't already seen the video on how to set the, the float up then I suggest you watch that first and I'll put a link in the description box below and there'll probably be a, a suggested up on the, the top of the screen here at some point on this video. Uh, it is important that you understand uh, what the sliding waggler float does. Basically, it enables you to fish at waters which are deeper than the length of your rod. So for example, if I've got a 13 foot rod and the water is 14 feet deep, trying to cast a float which is from there 14 feet to the hook is going to be quite difficult, but not if you use the slider. So as I say, watch the other video first of all and then come back to this one and I'll show you how to make them. Okay, so those of you who watch my channel regularly will probably already be aware that I've made these floats which are loaded bodied wagglers and they are in fact very very similar to these ones which is the sliding waggler. Now obviously based on that quite a few of the processes to make these floats are going to be exactly the same. So if you are a regular viewer or you've made some of these floats or some of my other floats please please feel free to uh, to skip some sections of this this video because it will be a little bit repetitive. Before I actually go on to uh, show you how to, to make these uh, floats, let me just discuss the differences a second. The loaded bodied waggler is there to give us casting weight with all this heavy loading in the bottom and just a small amount of shot down the line. And obviously they've got interchangeable tips as of pretty much all of my floats these days. Um, but they're a very good float for casting long distances um, but they're not very good for fishing really deep waters like this one. And so you can see that the sliding waggler, although the body is the same size, is actually somewhat longer. And again, if you watch my videos regularly, you'll see we did one on um, how to beat the wind with a waggle float. And again, I'll put a, a link in the description and there'll be a suggested video up at the top there. Um, that shows you how to overcome the effects of the the surface toe on the water and therefore the undertow down below and that's why these are so long you're going to be fishing in some fairly big waters because of course they're big and they're deep and so the longer float helps, helps you to get below that initial surface um, current um, the other thing of these is again body is exactly the same but the loading down here is actually fairly small probably only one or two grams Whereas on this one, the loading literally only gave you about um, one AA's worth of uh, uh, shot down the line, which is about 0.8 of a gram. As you can see, there are three floats in the range, ranging from 5 grams, 7 grams and 9 grams. Don't need smaller floats because obviously we're dealing with big waters, so you need some fairly substantial floats. Materials wise, we're going to be using balsa for the bodies and the smallest one we'll be using 12.5 millimeter or half inch balsa and for the two larger ones we'll be using 16 millimeter balsa. The stems here are made out of these bamboo barbecue skewers as you can see and we're pretty much going to keep the same length as they are already no need to cut these ones down. Again, as with all of my floats these days, we've got the interchangeable tips, and so we need this little plastic insert to go on top of the barbecue skewer. And those are basically the insides of these pastel gel pins. Again, I've spoken about this on plenty of other videos, so I'm sure you can find them. Just take them apart, wash out the insides, and then you can cut off a small section like this, and you'll be inserting the skewer into there, leaving yourself enough room at the top so you can insert the, the tip, like so. And really, that's all there is to it for the, the float. We do need to put a little amount of loading in. Um, this happens to be a lead weight, which is um, three grams. So I'm gonna grind off about one gram till it's about two grams. So as I just explained, there are three floats in the range. Um, but I'm only going to make one float up today to show you the process because obviously I've already made my set and I don't need another at this point in time. 
Now, just so you know um, the sizes, the first float, the five gram, is made of the 12.5 millimeter balsa wood, and the length of the body is 55 millimeters. The seven gram float is using the thicker 16 millimeter balsa wood, and that's also 55 millimeters. And the largest float, the nine gram, is again the 16 millimeter balsa wood, but this time it's a 65 millimeters. Now I've cut off this piece, and this is what I'll be making my float out of. So first of all then, we have to drill a hole through the center of the balsa wood. And to do that, you're going to need something like this. You can try and do it just by eye, but uh, that tends to be slightly off center. So this is a, a 10 minute job to make up what I've made here, which is a, a, a center finder. And all you do is put your dowel in there, mark, just turn it around a bit, mark again, turn, maybe one more, and you now have a perfect center on the dowel. Now, I have done a video on this, so again, I'll put a link in the description box below so you can make one of these for yourselves. As I say, it's only two bits of plywood and a strip of metal. It doesn't take long at all to make. So now we're ready to drill a two millimeter hole through the center of the, the balsa. Now I'm lucky, I've got my little lathe here which I made up and I'll just do that quickly now. Going through one side and then turn it around and go in through the other. There you go. You'll know when the two holes have met because the resistance just suddenly eases off altogether. Now obviously you haven't got one of these but I did in a previous video do a, um, a demonstration on how to do it with a standard uh, battery operated uh, drill screwdriver. So I'll just insert that now for you. The idea is to try and secure this down to the bench somehow. Now I found the easiest way to secure the uh, battery operated uh, drill screwdriver is just to take a clamp and clamp it in a position so it's parallel to the bench here. Take off the, the battery pack for now and then you'll be putting on either tape or a cable tie or something to hold the trigger in position. Then when you put this back on, it'll start up. Now, as you can see, I've also taken a couple of pieces of scrap wood so that they're just fractionally lower than halfway. And what I'm going to do is offer that up. Now, obviously I'm doing this all backwards here, but the point of the drill goes into the center and now I can actually gauge roughly where I am in terms of keeping this parallel. So I can take it into the drill and take it back the other way and drill from the other side. Never try and drill all the way through because that's going to mean it comes out slightly offset here. Uh, obviously this is just a piece of scrap. Um, but really this will give you quite a good result. Now, having drilled the hole and got it central, I'm going to take a smaller piece of the bamboo skewer, just a, an off cut of one that I took out of the box. And I'm going to insert that into the, the drill. And I'm going to use some 120 grit sandpaper just to sand around the top and bottom edges. Again, you can do this on that jig I showed you a moment ago with the, the battery screwdriver. All you need to do is just round over the top and bottom ends, make sure they join neatly with the uh, bamboo skewer, 
And then I've just literally run the, the sandpaper just along the body, just very, very lightly, just to take off any uh, grease uh, or anything else which was on there, because this was actually a very old piece of uh, balsa that I picked up out of the box. In a moment, we're going to take the actual stem, this longer one, and insert it. But we will be gluing it, and we've also got to glue in this top plastic uh, holder for the, um, the tip of the, of the float. So before I mix up any glue, I'm just going to make sure I've got this sorted out. Now I've cut off a piece of the, the tube, which is about 25 millimeters or so long. It's not critical. Um, somewhere around 25 millimeters is fine. And I'm just going to rough up the outer side of the thing so it'll accept paint better. These things are very smooth, so you do find that uh, if you don't do this, they tend to get the, the paint flaking off. Just a light rub down, so that's that. Now, inside, because obviously we're going to be putting this stem into here, to about the halfway point, um, inside is also smooth, but you can't sand that. So all I've done is I've taken a safety pin and just bent over the tip. And again, you'll have seen this before in other videos. If you just put it in and then twist and bend at the same time, pull it back towards you whilst you're twisting. What you're doing is just roughing up the inside, ready for the glue. I'm going to mix up just a small amount of Araldite epoxy glue. Literally, that's as much as I need. Okay, so that's about ready. Take the float body, and we're going to be putting the, the pointy end through first. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert it probably just about halfway in before I put any glue on it, like so. And then literally, just a small amount of glue is all that's needed just to go on there and push through. There we go, can be a little bit tight. Make sure you protrude by sort of 25, 30 millimeters so you get rid of the, the pointy bit because you will be using this in a bit. Just wipe off the excess glue from here. I use my finger. And then on the top end, remember to use the, the end here that's uh, been scored with that pin little dab of glue on the top, push on until it's about halfway through and then wipe off. There's the basic float assembled. While that's drying I've taken the little lead weight and I've ground it down by about a third so it's about two grams. Now I'm going to take a 2.5 millimeter drill bit and just gently drill in here. Now be very careful because lead weights do seem to grip hold of the, the drill bits very tightly. So just do a small amount at a time and keep it slow and withdraw because otherwise they do really do, they really do grip. And there we go. Now it has to be a 2.5 millimeter hole because although when we were doing the balsa I wanted a tight fit and the balsa would expand around the uh, the stem, uh, really with this one it's not going to expand so we do need to make it a 2.5 millimeter hole. Just chamfer off or sand off rather the edges and we can now fit it. We do need to make sure we glue on this as well so I'll just do that now. Okay, so there it is. That's the basic float ready to go then, folks. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna give it two coats of spray paint in black, and then I'll write on the, the loading on the side, and then I'm gonna give it two coats of varnish. This is the paint I'm gonna use. It's a paint and primer, and it's for use on wood, metal, and plastic. I don't think the brand makes any difference. Just go down to the local DIY store and buy something like this. And when you're using this, I'm using it in my garage, I've got the main doors open and plenty of ventilation. Be very careful and make sure you wear a face mask when you're doing it. So just to make the painting a bit easier for myself, I'm going to take another piece of bamboo skewer. I'll just break it off a bit shorter. 
and I'm going to insert it into where the tip's going to go and then hold that section. Now I can paint the whole float without having to, to hold on to anything and I'm using the glove. Okay, so that's the first coat done. Um, I'll wait a while for it to dry. I'll give it a quick rub down. I'll give it a second coat and then I'll mark on the loading so you can tell what size of float you're using. As I said, after that, two coats of a spray varnish and that's it, job done. And here's the final result. As you saw, it's very easy to make these floats um, and I can now use any one of these um, inserts to, to fit in. So I can change colours. As you can see, I put the, the yellow one in. If conditions change, I can go to a black one. Or indeed, if you're fishing in somewhere which is requiring a thinner tip, you can also change to a very thin insert. Of course, the opposite is also true. If you're fishing somewhere where it's really choppy and there's a, a bad undertow, you can go to a, a thicker balsa insert. Now, for those of you that haven't actually watched my video on loaded bodied wagglers, um, you won't actually have any of these tips at the moment. So if you want to make up the tips, all you need to do is to go to part three of the loaded bodied waggler series and that covers exactly how you make all of these. And then you'll have some really versatile floats. Okay, well, that's it for another one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. If you want to subscribe, you can do that too. And until the next time, bye for now.